Troy Williamson, IBF European Super Welterweight Champion. Let's go, baby. Okay, so post fight review for Ted Cheeseman versus Troy Williamson. Now, this is a fight that I'll be brutally honest with you. I was really looking forward to it, and I thought that this fight would be the fight of the night. It surely was, in my opinion. Now, I wanted this fight to go points. I didn't want to see either of these guys get knocked out for obvious reasons that I've interviewed both of them. Of course, uh, Ted, I uh, sponsored him for the Asini Byfield fight when he first won the British Super Welterweight title. But Troy, of course, he's from my neck of the woods up in the northeast of England. I'm Newcastle. He's Darlington. So for me, I wanted the fight to go to points. Didn't want to see a knockout and may the best man win. Okay. Now, how this fight was going... To be honest with you, I'm not really sure who I had winning up to the, the stoppage, the knockout. This fight was very, very close. And of course, I was around Mark Lazell's house with Steve Robinson. So I'm actually having to do like a lot of this off uh, memory as with all the post-fight reviews I'm about to do. But this fight was an absolute war. It was a war. Now, it's important to remember Troy Williamson is a Frank Warren fighter. Okay, so he's the away fighter, really. But of course, he was mandatory challenger for Ted Cheeseman's British Super Welterweight title. Now, this was a fight that you would have to say maybe Ted Cheeseman was pro probably going to be the favourite for this fight based on experience. Now, the way that Troy Williamson was fighting in this fight is, to be honest with you, surprised me a little bit with the fact that he was stood there literally from the opening bell and started trading with Ted Cheeseman. Now, both of these are... Big punches, for sure. Both of these do get hit quite a bit. So for me, from the opening bell, I thought this fight ain't going the distance. If these guys carry on like that, it ain't going the distance. It really isn't. But it was very, very backwards and forwards. Very backwards and forwards. What didn't help was that the advertising on the canvas inside the ring got like a little bit of moisture from the sweat or whatever it may be was making it very, very slippery. Troy slipped a couple of times. Ted slipped a couple of times. In fact, in the uh, Fowler-Smith fight, they both slipped there as well. So I don't know why the referee, at no point in between rounds, just didn't get a towel, just put his foot on the towel and just wipe the canvas where the advertising was. Because quite clearly, the material that they used for the advertising was crap. Let's be honest, it shouldn't be slippery. But it is what it is. Now... This fight, as I said, was very, very backwards and forwards. Both of these guys throwing huge, huge bombs. Both of them had big moments in this fight. They really did, where both of them got rocked or at least hurt. And I've, again, just off memory, I think it was at the end of round number seven, I think it was, that uh, Ted Cheeseman, it looked like he had uh, Troy Williamson pretty much out of there because he was landing some huge shots on Troy Williamson. But again, just, just at the very, very end of it, he caught Ted with a big uppercut, which seemed to wobble Ted, and Ted was the one who's actually uh, walking back to the corner on unsteady legs, but as was Troy as well. This was a, this fight was an absolute war. If you miss this fight, you're going to be kicking yourself, so please try and find a way to watch it. In fact, Matchroom will, will, uh, will probably get it uploaded um, here on YouTube soon enough, but it was an absolute war. Anybody who watched this, very, very backwards and forwards, um, where... Both of these guys literally gave everything. Neither one of them was really giving up ground. It was almost like, right, it's your turn to come forward now and unload on me. Okay, now it's your turn to come forward and unload on me. The tactics were very bizarre from one standpoint because if you were to really think about it before the fight, we know that both of these guys are very, very big punchers and they could hurt and legitimately knock each other out. So it was always going to be a bit of a 50-50, but this is what Ted does. Ted's never in a boring fight. And... He's used to trading up. He's used to eating up shots. Whereas Troy, he's very, very good at giving out the shots. Yes, he does take a few as well. But you don't really see Troy in too much bother. But if you were to really put your money on who would come out of the trades, it would probably be Ted. Okay, But while it was on times and other times, it was Troy. So it was very, very dangerous tactics from Troy. But I thought that uh, Ted, Ted's a very, very good boxer. I thought that maybe he might utilise some of that boxing, much like he did in the Fitzgerald fight, which I stand by. I thought that uh, Ted won that fight. You know, I was there ringside, and I know who won the fight. It was Ted Cheeseman won that fight, and for me, he got jobbed. But in this one, I expected him to box and show aggression, timely aggression. But he didn't really seem to do that too much. He was 
almost like these guys just wanted to just go to war. And it's very, very difficult to pick out a winner as had this fight been stopped or had gone the distance, who, who would have won that fight? Very, very difficult. Very, very difficult. But either way, the fight gets stopped in round number 10. Again, Ted, he's bringing Troy on to him and he's eating up a few shots and looking to counter him. And it was working to a certain point, but then Troy quickly realized what it was that he was doing and would faint a little bit, wait for Ted to open up, then he'd land a couple of uppercuts. And it was the uppercut that pretty much put Ted out. The left hook was what knocked him down, but it was the right uppercut that I think knocked out Ted Cheeseman. The left hook is what uh, knocked him down. Now, it's the kind of punch that I didn't really expect to see from Troy. I thought if Troy was going to drop Ted or stop Ted, it would have been from um, a looping overhand right. Neither one of which was the one that hurt Ted. So maybe that's pretty much what uh, surprised Ted. It's always the shots that you don't see coming is what puts you out, right? But either way, congratulations to Troy Williamson. Of course, now he's going to bring that belt over to the Queensbury stable, uh, Frank Warren. So that's going to be a shot in the eye for Eddie Hearn from uh, Frank Warren. You know that much. But listen, I would love to see this rematch. I ain't going to lie. I would love to see this rematch. Unfortunately for Ted, I don't really know what it is that he's going to do next. Could he look to have a rematch? Maybe. If not, then maybe have a fight with Anthony Fowler. Of course, Anthony Fowler, he got stopped today. For those of you who haven't seen that fight, I've just given away the spoiler. So maybe it's now time to see Ted Cheeseman versus Anthony Fowler. Winner moves on, really. Loser goes back to the drawing board. But either way, brilliant fight, was it not? Absolutely fantastic fight. So either way, congratulations to uh, Troy Williamson. Commiserations to Ted, to uh, Ted Cheeseman. I'm absolutely devastated for Ted with the way that uh, that fight ended. But of course, I'm very happy for uh, Troy as well. So anyway, congratulations to Troy. Drop your thoughts below. Click thumbs up, subscribe. Catch you on the next video. <laughs> I'm really happy to be back in Newcastle. Better not, it knocked out. Assassin.